Welcome to <laughs> Back to Basics. My name is Kendra. We are going to be doing a really fun Windows to the World tutorial. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right. And I'm just gonna turn the camera around and we are going to get started here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And I have already stamped this out just to save for time, okay? This was stamped on our normal watercolor paper, the normal Canson paper that I use a lot. Um, it is so, so fun. It's a really great paper, and it allows the water to really move around nicely. And so I stamped that on here with Stays On ink. So I have my stamp here, which is clear polymer, and I stamped it using stays on ink. Okay, boop, 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 boop. And then I stamped it right onto my watercolor paper. Okay, you can use a Misty for this. You can use all kinds of things for this. Um, uh, you can use a, a stamp positioner if you want to, whatever you wanna do, okay? So um, I have gone ahead and just stamped this out. Now, for coloring, you will need your palette. And that is like a absolute must or some sort of non-porous surface that you can use to add your colors to, okay? So I am going to be using a bunch of colors here, um, but we're just, I only have a bunch of colors just as options, okay? So we don't have to use them all. Um, what I really like to do is highlight the contrast in these windows because we just have this small space, um, you know, a small area making the biggest impact with the, um, with the, uh, you know, the contrast, the highlights and the shadows is really going to make it pop because it is a small space. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's jump in right now. Okay. I'll take my little image here. And I'm gonna just put a few colors right here to start out with. And um, I am going to take first number 969. So 969, and if you don't have these colors, don't sweat it, just grab a different color. There's no, no worries, you don't have to have the exact same colors, okay? Number 249, 249. Okay, number 177. Okay, and then 173. So this is just a really pretty limey color. And if I'm off of, I'm off screen, you can just let me know. And I can either zoom out or just um, put it back into the center, but I do want it kind of close so that you can have a good view of what I'm doing, okay? Now I'm gonna take my water and we're gonna do the same thing that we normally do with our brush. So you can see this brush is kind of dry. I'm opening up the bristles. Do you see all those air bubbles coming out? <laughs> we need all those to come out. We want this still to have a consistent um, uh, distribution of water throughout the bristles and we can't get that if there's air pockets within, okay? So I'm just gonna wipe off the excess water, and then I'm gonna start with number 969. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit until I need a different color. So 969, and we are going to, now I should mention, the stays on that I stamped this in is alcohol-based, so when I add water to it, it's not gonna move. The, the ink will not move, and so I can color within the lines however I want to. If I were to use alcohol-based markers on this, the ink would move because the alcohol meets alcohol and it'll move, um, but the water isn't gonna move it, okay? Same thing with stamping. Um, you know, if I stamp this with the Tombow marker, <laughs> it's gonna move if I add water, right? Because it's a water-based marker. But if you do an alcohol-based ink with a water-based coloring, the, the alcohol-based ink isn't gonna move. Okay. So 
D says, what do you clean your stamp off with after using stays on? So you can use any stamp cleaner. I'm not sure which one we have, um, but it's, it's one that you just, it comes in a bottle and then you just kind of pump some into a, a cloth and then you can clean your stamp. I don't really have a ton of the ink left usually when I stamp it. And so, I mean, <sighs> Sometimes I don't even clean it. It's really up to you if you want to, um, but but there are so many stamp cleaners on the market that you can choose from. Okay, so now I'm going to take number 969 with my brush. I'm gonna get just a bit more water because I've been talking. So 969 with my brush, and I just want to um, take this and just come along the edges here. Now remember, our highlights and our shadows still apply when we're coloring, right? So anything that has a cylinder or is a circle, your highlight is gonna be right in the middle, right? So we definitely want our edges to appear darker or the outside to appear darker. So we're just gonna start right on the outside edges, okay? And I'm just going to choose a side here. It doesn't really matter um, on these branches. It, you can choose, I, I chose the right hand side of this branch just because it sort of lines up with this side. On this one, it doesn't really matter. You could have done it on the left or the right. You just wanna leave one side open. Up here, I'm going to just add a little bit of color into the branches up in the top. Okay, so all we're doing right now is just kind of outlining a little bit of this color around our tree. And although we will have some color in the center, the majority of the color is gonna be on the outside of this tree because we want most of that center area to be highlighted. Okay. So I'm gonna let that dry, but I'm gonna come back to it. Actually, I don't like this line. So if you don't like a line or you feel like it's too strong, just go back and forth over it with your damp brush and it will go away. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit more of that 969 and I'm gonna begin going over my little wheelbarrow here. We wanna leave a highlight at the top. Remember we leave highlights at the top of things. Okay. And I'm just going to fill this in just a bit, I'm still leaving highlights. You can imagine what you would color this had you stamped it in um, you know, Tombow ink and had this been a normal, watercolor technique, um, how would you color that? Just ignore the outside that it stays on. How would you color that? You would leave highlights, right? So don't abandon, don't abandon your technique in, in projects like this. You still want that technique in here. You still want highlights and shadows. Okay. Okay, and then I am going to take a little bit more and notice I'm just working with the one color right now, just putting in the base lines of my pot and my little tree and my wagon. These are such great stamps to make cards because you can do assembly line. They're really, really easy to do assembly lines. So you would do like all these three on everything. And then the next step might be that you do all um, the, the greenery or all the pumpkins or all the grapes on the next, you know, run through. So these are a really great card for assembly line. If you were gonna do like fall or harvest cards, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, things of that nature. Okay, so now I'm going to use some of my greens while these are drying. So I'll just come back. I'm gonna take that 249 first 
and I'm gonna begin to drop this into the back. Now, my goal here is to have as much contrast as I can, you know, without going crazy. Obviously, the biggest contrast is black and white, right? We don't wanna go that far. But notice I'm leaving, and maybe I could zoom in a bit more. Notice I'm leaving this white band at the top of that hill in the back. I want to leave that band because that's my highlight. That's my highlight in the back and the sun is hitting that hill, right? I'll leave another band on this one too. But for now, I'm going to keep moving um, down here and I'll leave a little band at the top. And I'm just going to come down until I reach this next bush. Even though I got a little bit in there, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, I'll use that same color. And I'm going to skip this middle area because I do want to break up the colors. And I'm just gonna come right in here leaving a little bit of a white band. Doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly spaced, but it should be there because it helps differentiate the sections of your painting. Okay. Now we are going to take our 177 and our 173 and we're gonna fill in these other two areas, okay? So this middle area, I'm going to be using a mixture of these two, 177 and 173. So keep in mind, when you use a palette like this, where am I? Oh, I'm not even on screen, you guys. So I'm gonna be mixing 177 and 173, okay? Keep in mind, when you have a palette, you can mix your colors however you want to, which is really fun. Um, and actually, I'm just noticing I missed this little bit in here. And I think I colored it the other green, but that's okay. No, I didn't. I colored it this green. Good. <laughs> okay. You know, with these windows of the world, it's easy to miss little spots. So really pay attention to where you're coloring, okay? I'm going to take that 173 and 177 and just blend those together just a bit. And I'm going to go in here and place this green into that hill, hill area. Okay, so I have my first base coat into that hilly area. Now most of these, is this is just the first coat and we can go back. The, the beautiful thing about this is um, you don't need a bunch of different colors. All you need is to be able to layer your colors and to be able to layer your colors just means that you need to let it dry before you go back in. Okay, so like the trees and the wagon and this little basket over here, if we didn't let that dry and I just went right in with the, the next layer, it would just, that color would just dissipate in the water and I wouldn't get any, um, you know, darker uh, shadows, darker areas. And the layering would be ineffective because it just, it wouldn't work if it was wet. But when it's dry, you can layer over the top of that and we'll see that as we continue coloring. Okay, so I'm just gonna take straight 173 in this front area. And I'm just gonna go in here. Notice I don't need to color every, you know, uh, you know, every spot, every area, every tiny um, space. I can leave some areas open. I can leave those as a highlight. So just like down in here, I didn't go all the way to the edge, but you can, you absolutely can. Okay. While I have this 173 on my mind, 
I'm gonna go in and put a little bit into the apples. So um, I don't know about you, but most of the red apples that I see, like honey crisps and um, you know apples like that, have a little bit of green in them, even if they're red. So we're gonna start with our 173, and I'm just going to plop <laughs> just a little bit of green in some of these. And it doesn't have to be a lot of green. It doesn't have to be, you know, super strong green. But I find it does kind of help that red. Um, it strengthens, strengthens the depth of the red because the green is the complement. And so when they mix a little bit, it does deepen that, that red and gives it more weight. So I like to put just a little bit of green into those apples. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do, oh, Deneen, yes, good catch. See, this is what I mean. <laughs> Pay attention to the little areas. She said between the spokes, yes, good catch. It matters, those little things, they do matter. And it's really easy to kind of have your eye elsewhere and miss that. Nice job. Okay, uh, by the way, I am um, giving this away. So if you would like this, just uh, put a comment in the comment section that you would like this and um, Leah will pick a winner. Okay, so now, now that we have most of our greens in, actually we can put um, a little bit of this 177 while we're kind of playing with the greens. I'm gonna put the 177 into the pumpkins, the little pumpkin stems. Right into the pumpkin stems like this. Okay. Sorry, you guys. I feel like my voice is just a little bit hoarse today. I apologize. All right. I'm going to grab that really beautiful red. This is number 856. It's so pretty. It's such a, um, a rich red. And it does, you know, all the reds, they really do require a bit of layering. Um, but this one is just so nice. I don't mind layering it. All right. And then I'm also, while I'm here, going to add my other colors too. So this is 526. We're going to use that for the sky. And then our pumpkin colors, which you guys know I use these a lot. The orange is 933 and then the yellow is 993. So 933 and 993. So 993 right here. And then here, let me just zoom out so you guys can see. <clears throat> and then 933, you guys, I'm so sorry, my voice. I'm like losing my voice. <laughs> I apologize, you guys. <laughs> okay. Also adding 636 and 685. Hi, Trisha. Good to see you. Trisha is so good at watercolor too. She's one of our design team members. She makes beautiful watercolors and um, a lot of it is uh, just so innovative, so uh, creative. She is just, she's a mastermind with watercolor. All of our designers are, they're amazing. Okay, 685, 685. I'm just gonna put a bit of that onto my palette. And then 636. Oh, Melissa, you have, oh, I'm so sorry. I know how you feel. It's like, we just talk and then it's, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> it's like horse and it's fine and then it'll get bad again, so. Um, hopefully you guys can look past it for now. All right. So you see my colors on here. I have 685, 636, 993, 933. 
526, 856 are the ones I just added, okay? So I'll definitely let you know which one I'm using when I do, but I do wanna be nice and close so that you can get a good idea of how I'm coloring this. I'm gonna go ahead and take my blue and just put this in before I do the leaves and everything because even if I get a bit of blue on the leaves, it's not gonna be a big deal. So I'll just take that 526. Notice I'm leaving a white band between the sky and that green hill. I'll go in between here. Some of this, some of this you just kind of guess if it's sky and if it's not, well, you just made it sky. It's fine. <laughs> Mary, this water uh, windows to the world is number M5050 autumn window. Okay. So now I'm going to take the, uh, the 993. This is that really pretty, um, warm, really warm yellow. And I like to use this as a um, base color for my pumpkins just because I don't always like it to be like a, a really, really strong orange, but that is personal preference. So if you prefer a really, really strong orange, you can go straight in <clears throat> with the orange if you want to. That is totally up to you, but I do kind of like to start the little base like that. And you can see we're just going in with that first layer all around, right? We're just going to put our first layer in of everything and then we can go back in and add all of our shadows. I'll take that 685 for my little grapes and I'm just going to put a little bit of this color on top as if it is a highlight. So I'm actually not doing much of this color. You could skip that 685 if you wanted to, which is that really pretty purpley uh, pink. That's this one, that 685, it's like a grape color. And I'll take the 636, that deeper purple, and I'll just put this underneath and disperse it kind of in between that cute pinky purple color but I just like to have it, um, you know, instead of it being just straight white, I do like to have a, another color up on top, kind of like the pumpkins, I did the yellow, instead of leaving it just white, but it's really up to you. Lastly, let's go ahead and put in our leaves. So our leaves are gonna be that 177, this color. 177 and I'm just going to start putting this in and actually we got to put our red in too for our apples. Notice I'm not bringing this color all the way to the edge. I want this to have a really strong contrast so the leaves are not being totally colored in. Okay. Keep going. You can kind of jump around if you want to. You can go in sequence. I kind of grabbed this and just went, went to town. It doesn't really matter where you go as long as you get all the leaves. <laughs> Grabbing that 177. I like to leave the highlight right on the tip because they do kind of come together in the center. Like a lot of um, apple trees have those kind of clustered leaves and they come together in the center, which is where you're gonna have that shadow. So the opposite of, you know, dark shadow in the center is a highlight on the end, the edge of the leaf. All right, am I missing any leaves, you guys? <laughs> Let me know if you see any, any spots that I missed. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in now 
and put our little apples in using that 856, that really pretty bright red. And this is just gonna be the first layer in here, okay? So it's gonna kind of feel or appear kind of pinky, and that's fine because it's not very deep yet. Thank you, Renee. Renee is one of our amazing designers as well. And I'm sure you will see some of the cards she's made when I share them um, at the beginning of lives. So for those of you just joining um, from, you know, just through the holidays, I'm just going to take the first couple of minutes during the lives to um, show you some holiday cards to inspire you. And um, the, you know, they're going to come from different lines. They won't be all watercolor. There'll be some other ones. I showed a cubby. I showed a front and back today earlier. So if you miss those, you can always rewatch the live. Um, but they're just really fun to get an idea, even if it's just the coloring. Our designers are so good at coloring and um, figuring out the kind of composition they want to use for um, the image. And it's just gorgeous. And I, I really want to show you guys that. I think you'll love it. But I will not be taking a ton of time at the beginning. So for those of you who are like, oh, I just want to get into watercolor, I promise it's not going to be long. Um, and you might find something that you really like and that inspires you. Okay, I see a leaf I missed. So I'm just going to just put that little green spot in. Okay, so we have our base color. Okay, and um, I am going to now go back to the tree and start putting in some of my shadows, okay? And we're just gonna move along and put in our second layer because most everything is dry now except for our apples, but we won't hit those till um, you know the end of the second layer. So I'm gonna go back to that 969 and this is really the key to coloring these, is layering your color. I mean, I could leave it like this, it looks really cute, but when you layer your colors and you get that really solid contrast in there, it just makes it pop, it really does. And if I put this right next to each other, you can see the difference when we go in and add those extra layers. Look at that. It's just a matter of layering your colors. It really is. One of them looks really, really bright. These are the same colors, you guys. The same colors. All I did was enhance the contrast by layering the colors. Okay? So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, I'm going to take the um, that uh, brown. Now, I want I want you guys to keep in mind, this is stuff you can do in the normal the normal AI watercoloring technique, okay? When you layer your colors like this and you build that contrast, that is what's going to get it to pop off of the page and look more three-dimensional. And we'll use our twin tones and get some really nice contrast in here. Okay, so I am just gonna go and layer along the areas that I've already put in. Okay, notice I am not going as far as the original line that I made. So I'm keeping the new layer smaller than the original layer, okay? And I can always come back in and be like, oh, I want a little bit more color in here. So I'm gonna draw some of this out with a wet brush so that it doesn't feel so white. You can do that. It's amazing what you can do with just water <laughs> when you add this color. All I'm using right now is water just to push around this color. So I'll take that 969 again and I'm just layering this color. Layer, layer, layer. And already we're starting to see some 
dimension. Norma, I am giving it away. Yes, if you would like it, let me know. Leave in the comments if you would like this little guy. And Leah will pick a name. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more of the 969 on my palette. And I just colored that on with my marker. For those of you who haven't been here before, I just used this little Tombow water-based marker and colored it right onto my palette. This is the 969. Okay. We'll take that 969 and again, a really small layer. And maybe we wanna bring a little bit of this color out too. This is just water and I'm pulling it out of the edges just like we would on a normal watercolor. See how I just pull that out of the edge? Okay, I'm gonna go back in here onto my wheel, but I'm not gonna go as far. So I'm just gonna deepen this color. Now this part of the wheel is underneath, so it will be darker. And then I want these, this is just a style, a style choice is I want these outer pieces to be darker than the pieces inside. So the main pieces of the wheelbarrow are going to be lighter than the frame pieces. See how I can just layer that when it dries. Right, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to begin to put just a little bit of color into the spokes. And I did have a bit of a basket back here. <laughs> so we can add some color there. Oh, sorry, my finger was in the way, apologize. And I'll take a bit more of that brown now and come in and layer again into the wagon, making sure to leave highlights. It doesn't matter what colors you use, whether you want to do a deep contrast, whether you want it to be a really light, um, you know, soft look you want to leave highlights. <laughs> we say this all the time, right? You've got to leave highlights. You need to have them because it's what makes this look three-dimensional when it has a highlight. All right, we're going to move to our basket. And I'm just going to go and deepen some of these areas in the basket, namely the areas on the edge. But then I'll take my brush, see this is just water on here, and I'm going to draw some of that color out into my basket so that it's not just plain white. It's kind of like pulling the color out of the edges when we stamp it, right? Okay, we're going to move on to our greenery now, so our hills. And um, I like to focus the majority of the shadow in the crevices, okay, and down at the bottom of the areas of... Um, you know, where they meet each other at the very bottom. That's where the shadow is going to be because things closer to the ground and, you know, in a composition like this, things closer to the ground are going to be darker. And then as you move up, you're going to have the highlight on the top. Renee, you made the autumn owl, the owl cubby with the lights? Oh my goodness, it is so cute, you guys. That owl cubby is darling. I gotta, I gotta just, for those of you who missed it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt this. Renee made this. Look at the lights. Oh, 
I seriously can't. This is the owl cubby. <laughs> Good job, Renee. It is darling. I absolutely love it. Um, kudos to you for being so creative. Okay, back to our painting. I'm going to take now that green, so that 249, 249, and put that on, back onto my palette because I used most of it. So this is the 249. Take our mark or our um, brush, dip it into that 249, and I'm going to focus the shadow into the crevice or at the bottom of the area that I'm coloring or that has the same color. So this is the bottom of that bush right here. So my shadow is going to be at the bottom. I'll come back in and really deepen that up. I like a nice big contrast because it just makes the colors pop. Go in here. Okay. We'll do the same thing over here. So I'm just adding in, oops, I'm kind of off screen. Adding in the darker shadow right at the base of this bush. Same thing in here. And you can always go back and add a bit more if you want it to be stronger. Like I said, I love a really strong uh, shadow. Especially for these. I just feel like they look so good when they just pop. And be patient because, you know, the more patient you are, uh, the more your your you give your card time to dry, and the better your shadows will look, because when you layer onto dry color, that's when you're gonna get the absolute best shadow. Okay. All right, one seventy seven now. And we're gonna go in here. Even though we mixed the one seventy seven and the one seventy three for this, I just want to use the one seventy seven for the shadow. And I should note, the less water you use when you add the color, the heavier the concentration is going to be when you apply it to your um, composition. Okay, 177. We'll go back in and that's not quite dry. So actually the better thing now is to let that dry and we can always come back and move on to um, the, this bright area down here. 173. Okay, what am I saying? Um, just realized that's the other angled arm of the wheelbarrow. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Visible uh, um, through the spokes. Yes. You're right. Oh, Cheryl, good job. Um, yes, it is. So you would actually color this because it's the other side. And actually, this is probably the other handle. <laughs> but you know what? It's okay. It's totally fine. This part is now a bush and the other handle's been broken off. So we're just going to go with it. <laughs> Good catch, Cheryl. Nice job. Um, yeah, it's so funny because you start coloring and then things kind of become like what you make them. <laughs> okay, I'll take that 173 and I'm going to go in. Now, this is super bright green. I love it. And 
I'm just gonna go right under these areas and really bring out that bright green. Do you see how we're already building this composition now? We're already seeing this contrast pop. And we're just, we're using the coloring techniques that we use for the normal watercolor um, technique that we always use. But we remember the tips and tricks of the coloring that we do in our, in those compositions and apply it to here, apply it to these. All right. Now I do on this really bright green, I do like to bring in some of that 177 because I, I like it to really be contrasted. Um, so I will take that 177 and you could also mix this with the 173 if you wanted, but I just think it makes the 173 really pop forward when it has a nice strong shadow. So some of the colors just aren't strong enough to build upon themselves. And we just need to give them another color to kind of help it out. So see how that 177 really helped out that, that limey green pop. And then we'll go back to the top, grabbing that 177 again, and we're gonna put that shadow in. We're gonna try this again. And the fun part about doing these is you can take the pen itself all right, take the pen itself and um, add in the shadows with the pen, which we normally don't do this in the other technique um, because it's really hard to get the lines out. But if you are coloring these, it's a lot easier to use. So if I were to take the 173, the pen, I can come in here and really create some bright, really, really bright um, areas of color that just draw out the, the um, brilliance of that. Do you see that? So this is how I'm building, this is now, this is just water, but this is how I'm building that contrast. And then I soften, just soften. But look how bright that is. It's so bright, it's so fun. I can do the same thing with the 177 on that back bush. I can take that 177 and just put in a really dark shadow back in here. And just really darken this up. I wanna see that. And then again with the 249, I can do the same thing, 249. Just come in and get a really deep, just small areas with the pen. You don't wanna overdo it because this is really what makes the colors pop is these tiny, very, very contrasted areas. Jerry, you can get this um, look by just adding from your palette. So you don't have to use the markers if you don't want to. So don't worry. Don't worry about being too heavy handed. You can always just use your palette. But it's just a fun way to add a little bit of extra contrast if you want to, okay? We'll go back in now with our little grapes. So this is gonna be that 636. This one, the 636. And I'm just going to add some darker areas in here. To go along with that heavy contrast. Um, Tina, you know what? The best tip to not be heavy handed is practice. So if you have a practice paper next to you, then I would um, 
do it on there, have the same thing on a practice paper and really get that feel for how much pressure you're going to use on your pen before you go on to your project paper. Um, so for example, if I were to go in with the 969 on the tree, which you can, I really, it's a very gentle, I use a lot, multiple strokes so that I'm not just, you know, going down and adding too much. Because if I just do small strokes, well, I can easily take, you know, a little bit of water and um, wash away a small stroke, right? But if I do a big giant line, and I don't like that, if I don't like that big giant line, then I'm going to have a hard time washing it away with water, right? So if you use really small strokes, really gentle, small strokes, you could also use for the brown, you could also use the twin tone, which I can show you also. So the twin tone, you're going to get a very similar look and you can take that and it's just a little bit more detailed which I like for these small branches but you can come in here and really really add in this contrast but using the small strokes method I just I like to tip my toe in <laughs> and then when I feel like I have it down or I'm comfortable with you know, what I've made, then I can kind of jump in. But until then, I like to use just a small amount and, um, you know, just do little strokes here and there. So I guess while I'm using this pen, I can go back in and add some contrast to my little wheelbarrow. I was going to do this at the end, but I might as well just do it now because it's mostly in the, the browns. And I'm just adding extra contrast. So with the spokes. And then on this little guy, the shadow is going to be under that lip. And Cheryl pointed out this is the other side. Good job of the cart. And we'll deepen the frame because I wanted this nice and dark or darker. There's some cracks in here. So maybe I want to accentuate those little cracks. I can do that with my little um, twin tone. So much of this is what you do with the contrasted color. And you know what? I just noticed that I once again <laughs> forgot the green between the spokes. <laughs> okay, so make sure you get that in there. And I think that's pretty much it for the brown. I'll leave this pretty simple, honestly, with the brown. Um, I don't need a ton more contrast. I can put it if I want to. I could put in another, maybe a warmer brown in here if I wanted to. Or you can always kind of take a wet brush and just sort of soften the areas that you just went over. But it's really up to you if you want to do this. You don't have to. I like the contrast as is. So it's, it's really up to you how you want to do this. Now, what's really gonna pop is the um, the pumpkins. Uh, but before I do that, let me just come in here with my purple. <laughs> and this is the other side, this is the bullet tip. And just put in some deeper contrasted areas in here. Okay, so we'll put in our um, apples now and our pumpkins. We'll do the pumpkins first. So I'm going to use that, um, just the 933. I'm not going to go back in with the yellow. I'm just using the 933. And we'll give myself a bit more. 933. And I'll take my brush and 
just put in some of this 933 and I will again take the, the actual pen once this is dry and put in more. But notice I'm leaving highlights, right? I'm always leaving highlights in here. It's so important. Okay. And I can take my pen now, 933, and really brighten these up. <laughs> I love this. So it looks watercolored because you've already watercolored it, but then you get that really bright pop when you use the pen itself. It's hard to get um, a wash like this with just a pen. So you do need to go back in or in in the beginning and really put, um, you know, put your highlights in, start with the shadows, and then you go back in with the pen at the end and really get those popped, um, you know, pop that color. And you can always come back in and just soften it, soften it. Okay, Jane, I wonder if there'll be Kendra dots. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll put some in. <laughs> I don't have the stamp with me right now. It's it's um it's put away, but I could always use my little micron tip and put it in. Um just looking at this, I want to brighten up that back hill right here. So I'm gonna use that 173 and I just I want this to be brighter. <laughs> so I'm going to just take the 173. And just brighten up that back area because I think it really makes the pumpkins pop more with that limey color. All right. We'll go in with our red now. So are you guys still with me? This is, it's a process I like to go through bit by bit um, because I know that it's dry when I go back. So it is a it is a bit of a process, but but it's one I enjoy. I think it's fun to you know see those layers sort of come to life, and um, especially when they dry and you go back in and it's like oh my gosh you know that's so cool that's so bright. I just love to see that. All right, the eight fifty six, and I am just putting this in again. 856, I need a little bit more. And I'm not, I'm not really like brushing this on. It's almost like I'm just dabbing it on because I want it to be really bright. Okay. <laughs> Jane, I can't believe you don't have one in your pocket on a chain or a bracelet. <laughs> Very good point, Jane. You know, at this point, I should. I really should because I use it so much. That's hilarious. I really should. <laughs> I should absolutely have one anytime I need it. Okay. Just going around here. You can still see that green I left in. But I'm adding this red and just building on the existing red. And just dabbing into that color. See how much this is popping? It's just, it's amazing what you can do um, with some, you know, these are the same pens. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're, they're the same pens, we're just layering them. So you don't need so many different ones like you would with like an alcohol, um, you know, based a Copics. Um, and I only say this because I'm terrible at Copics. And so for me, this is a way for me to get kind of that similar appearance without using Copic markers because I just, I'm not good at them. <laughs> I'm really not. And um, some of you are just incredible um, you know, with the Copic markers and I applaud you. They're, they're so hard for me to use, but they make such a huge impact 
when you use them well. And I'm always just amazed at the coloring that you can do with Copics. Yes, Lynn, I'm using the marker. I'm using the bullet tip, so this is the small side. And I'm just really focusing that red on the bottom. There's some areas where I'll go a little bit higher, but I do want to keep the majority of that color kind of in the areas where you would see shadows. Now for our leaves, we'll go back in for our second layer on the leaves and I'll use that same um, 177 for these. So I'll just grab a bit more of my palette. I probably have enough, but we'll go for it. Okay. So 177. And I'm really just focusing this new color, the second layer, on the interior of the leaves. So mostly in the center of the little leaves. And I'm just going bit by bit. Strategically moving from one side to another. You don't have to do that. Sometimes I jump around. But I'm mostly focusing on that inner part where it kind of gets um, brought together. Oops, I forgot this little guy. Where it kind of puckers into the center, it's drawn together in that little pinwheel formation. And I can take that bullet tip again with the green and really deepen up the inside. See how that makes just such a big difference when you go in and you just add a bit more contrast. I just, I love these windows to the world because you can just color. <laughs> you can just have fun and color. Maybe you don't want to think about, you know, the composition or where things are going. Maybe it's just one of those days where you're like, I just want to color. The windows to the world is such a great option for that. be really cute to put a bit of that lime green on the ends or the tips of these leaves. If you guys want me to do that, just put it in the comments. Be kind of cute. If you want me to leave it as is, I will. Okay, I don't see any comments yet, so I'm just going to put a bit in. Just with the with the um, tip. Okay, well, I kind of like it. It's cute. Just adds a little bit more brightness to the apples. And you don't have to do it on every single leaf. You can just do it on some leaves. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. I think that added a lot, actually. I hope it registers in the in the uh, video. I hope you can see that. And then I'm taking the 177 and just putting a bit of a shadow on the stems, which I forgot to do. Of our pumpkin friends. Yes, Jane, stamp a bunch ahead of time and grab a bag of markers. Yep. <laughs> It's just, it's so relaxing if you're just like, I just want to color. <laughs> you can just grab some windows of the world and go for it. All right, we have not forgotten, forgotten our sky in the background. Okay, we do need to add a little bit of 
Laura said, what about the stems to the apples? Um, you know, I didn't even notice those, but you could just do a little bit of green. I would just go in, you know, I probably just kind of selective vision because those ones don't have a lot of area to put in your highlights and shadows. And so I probably just didn't even see them. <laughs> but you can just go in with that and I'll zoom in and show you what that looks like. So I just went in with that, um, just that bullet tip green and put the little stems in. Just like that. Some of them will be um, lighter and some will be kept, uh, be colored darker. Okay, so we'll go back into our sky and just put a little bit of a darker blue in there. We'll take that 526 that we've um, used a lot for our sky. 526. Oh yes, Leah, green twin tone. We have a new green twin tone. Oh darn, I should have thought about that. I don't know if I have it with me sitting here. Rats. Um, I don't, but I'll use it. I will use it, um, soon, but we do have a new green twin tone. It's very beautiful. I love it. And you could totally use it on the leaves. So thanks, Leah. Thank you for keeping me in line. Oh, and here's a branch too, which I didn't see. So I'll just take my twin tone and just... Put it in areas that you can just miss you guys it's so easy to just miss little spots and for my shadows I do just kind of like to put them in um, I don't like to have the shadow close to the hill I like it to be up up in here um, up in the trees because I want this to look highlighted so it's really up to you how you want to do it but personally I like to keep my shadows for the sky up in here. Because it kind of brings your eye into the center area. Okay. All right, you guys. What did we think of this? Did you like it? Um, are you happy you learned about Windows to the World? Did anybody not know about Windows to the World? Was this new to you? Um, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you learned something new. I hope you did. I just, I really love these Windows to the World and I think they're so fun to do. I know it's not the traditional, um, you know, watercolor stamping, but I thought it would be really fun to just show, um, you know, another idea for watercoloring that, um, you know, is, is a little bit more straightforward and doesn't require you to kind of plan out a composition. So I hope that you enjoyed this one. I will give it away. If you would like it, you can just leave a comment, uh, in the comment section that you would like to have this and, um, I will give it away. So I am going to turn the camera back around to you guys and I'll say my little goodbyes. I'm glad my voice um, didn't <laughs> totally go away uh, for the live. So one second here and we will turn it around. Hi. <laughs> um, okay. What did you say, Diane? I saw a comment. Um, your layering is amazing. Thanks, Julie. Thank you, Georgia. Um, Pam, yeah, you're right. It is It is a way to make a wow card for sure. Uh, Lynn, thank you. Diane, I thought I saw a comment from you. Um, maybe not. Something about my announcement. I don't know, but... Um, so my announcement, I am going to, I know, um, I know it is a week away, so you guys will have to wait, but I would just, I would love it if you could come and join me, uh, Tuesday morning at 10. Uh, it's a really special announcement for me. And, um, I'm hoping that 
uh, you guys will be there to see it. I'm very excited. I've been working on it for a long time and I've put my heart into it. And um, so I would love to just share what that is with you guys. And it might be something that you could use in your projects. I won't tell you what it is yet, <laughs> but I did want to tell you that there would be a special live next Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. And um, yeah, it's near and dear to my heart. So uh, if you come, that would be great. And if you can't come, there is a, uh, th I will post the live replay, okay? Um, but that will not take away from that evening's Back to Basics. So we still will have a Back to Basics um, in the evening. Yes, Melissa, PST. So 10 a.m. Pacific time uh, for the special announcement. And then um, we will still have Back to Basics at 5 p.m. PST the same day, and that's um, September 28th, okay? So um, I'm really excited too, Debbie. It's, I just, I wish I could tell you guys what it is. It's, it's so special to me, and um, I just, I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited to uh, share it with you. Uh, yeah, so I can't wait to let you guys know what that is. And um, I will see you next week. Smile, take care of yourselves. I love you all. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you learned something cool and um, have a great rest of your week. Okay, big hugs. Oh, and check us out on all the other social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, all of that good, good stuff. Okay. Uh, I will see you next week. Bye everyone.